Why hello then, good talk to you all, and welcome to a brand new Frip and Frank N podcast show. I am your host, Dr. Weiser Frip, and with me, the host, my creation, oh, I'm Frank N. Stein. Yeah, they know that, my boy. I just, you just said your name. Oh, yes, I did, master. So, Frank and my boy, what is the topic of discussion for this month? Uh, slashes. Slashes. Oh, well, that is interesting. Slashes. In fact, slashes, I would say, was a very, very big selling brand uh, back in the 1980s. And, pos- uh, well, yeah, not possibly, but it was also in the early in late 70s and well i would say the earliest one i could think of is psycho oh yes psycho that one where he's dresses up as his mum uh, that's funny when he was dressed as his mum uh, and, and, and then he just like oh no did he become his mother yeah franken he he became his mother um uh, also, another slasher that, well, uh, it's not really considered, well, a slasher, it's a suspense thriller, but uh, Peeping Tom, that came out a little bit before Psycho. Oh, I don't think I've seen that one, Master. No, no, I don't think you have. Uh, but you can watch it on Netflix, maybe tonight when I'm asleep. Oh, yes, because I don't sleep. Yeah, you don't do a lot of things a normal human body should do. Mind you, it's not human. You're made of bits of other people, like Frankenstein's monster. Hence your name. Oh, yes. Um, oh, uh, one I liked, Master, was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, you know, 1974. You said that got banned. Yeah, it did back in the day, because I think it was ahead of its time. But now it's very tolerable and tame compared to the crazy shizer stuff we have today. Oh, and also, I loved Halloween. You say we watch that every single year. Yeah, we do. I watch the first two at least, or I try and make time for the others. Oh, last Halloween, I just watched all ten films. Wasn't tired. I just sat and watched it. Got snacks and everything in between. Yeah, I, I think I can remember waking up for, for to... Uh, well, for you to change my catheter, because it, it was full, and I heard you uh, watching s- uh, one of the films. Yeah, I think I was on the fourth one by the time you woke up for me to change your catheter bag. Okay, so um, less about my catheter and more about the slashers. Um, of course, one slasher film which was you know, coming f- out throughout the 80s with countless sequels... Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah, I love that master. I still don't know why Jason wasn't the killer in the first one. It was his mother, and Jason took over in the sequel. Mind you, it's probably... I I don't mind the first one. The first one kind of does serve as like a realistic revenge thriller. But uh, the um, second film... They don't explain it much about how Jason comes back to life. Oh, no, Master, they don't. But it's still good, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, what, you know, I... My favourite one um, is part four. Uh, the final chapter. Oh, Master, I like part six. It's got a great soundtrack with Alice Cooper, the man behind the mask, and... You know, teenage Frankenstein, all that stuff. It's very enjoyable for me. Also, I think that's when they sort of kind of stop taking the franchise as seriously by part six. Part five, it was just that Jason Voorhees imposter copycat. Yeah, I, I would say that Friday the 13th part five is a good sequel. In fact, if you just think of it as a slasher movie... You know, a slasher film, not a Friday the 13th sequel, but a slasher film, you know, it is quite good. You know, like Halloween 3. Uh, Halloween 3 was, um, 
Well, they went as far as to ban the whole slasher-like feel from which the series spawned from. Oh yes, Master, I remember that. Uh, yeah, it was supernatural. Yeah, so that did not have Michael Myers in either. People do huge sizes on that film, saying it is such crap and piss. But I, I don't think it is. I think it's a good film in its own way. Just do not take it so hard as a Halloween film or sequel or anything. You know, it's it's a good film. Um, also, uh, other slashes uh, in the series of uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, part 7 uh, is when Kane Hodder came into it. Oh yes, I think Kane Hodder was a great Jason. A great Jason. But I just feel that uh, he came into it around the, the, the wrong time. I mean, I think he did great jobs portraying Jason and made the character his own. But I feel like it was like, you know, he didn't have good stories to work with and stuff. I still think, why did they not bring him back for Freddy vs. Jason? I I do not know. Uh, I think they want uh, he wanted to be in the role, but yeah, it is a shame though that uh, there's so much the Freddy vs. Jason crossover movie could have done better, but yeah. Um, it's okay, it's a fun film, but uh, probably one you should not take seriously. Uh, part 8, that was total piss. It wasn't total Wii Master. I mean, I enjoyed it, the kills and everything, but I get what you mean by it not being in Manhattan. It's more like Jason goes to Manhattan because they're going to Manhattan. He only seems to be, they only seem to be in New York about in the last 10, 15 minutes of the film and already he's killed a dozen of them off. Yeah, yeah, I know. That is pretty disappointing. A bit misleading on the title, I would say. And then there was part 9 where New Line bought it and they made Jason X and then Freddy vs. Jason. I have to say, the best film with Jason in that New Line did was probably, in my opinion, Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. That was just... Uh, Jason, the full physical Jason was only in it for like two sequences, the opening scene and the finale of the film. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, he kept jumping from body to body. Anyhow, I did like the ending when it set things in motion for Freddy vs. Jason. Unfortunately, it was a 10 year wait. It wasn't 10 years for me, Buster. I know it wasn't. Anyhow, let's talk about another slasher franchise. Oh yes, I know what we're going to talk about next. Do you? Oh yes. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. You loved that series. Y yes, I did, Master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was written and directed by the late great Wes Craven. Yeah, and had Robert England as Freddy Krueger. Oh boy, I enjoyed that one. I liked the creativity he had with the claws. Well, they were knifed fingers, a bladed glove. Oh yes, a bladed glove. Um, I also thought, um, you know, that was a unique weapon. Yeah, yeah, it is quite a unique choice of weapon, my boy. Um, also, um, you know, I like the main lead in this Heather Langenkamp. Oh, did you have a young Jack Sparrow in it? Uh, yeah, yeah, young Johnny Depp, you know, in the horror movie, which uh, was, well, he wasn't a known actor much back then. Um, yeah, and they made a number of sequels to that too, didn't they, boy? Uh, yes, they made, uh, uh, they made Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, Ah, and Wes Craven actually returned for some involvement in that, because he, he was so impressed about the franchise he started doing so well, he, he got back in, I think he produced the third movie. Yes, and then there was the fourth one, The Dream Master, and then there was The Dream Child, and then 
new then there was the final nightmare yeah and then the uh, seventh film if you can call it that takes place in our world but a nightmare in elm street is fiction um but then there's this demonic like entity that takes the ship of freddy kroger uh i don't know how that works but apparently it does work as a um a seventh film in the series but uh, uh, yeah, it is called Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Wes Craven is even in it, playing himself. Um, I don't know if he's good so much at acting. Uh, don't he do? You said he does better when he just makes a brief cameo and um, also hides and also is behind the camera work. Yeah, I would say that. I did enjoy his cameo in Scream. Oh yes, Scream, that's another slasher series, isn't it, that didn't go out into like the 21st century? Yeah, the first one came out in the December of 1996, and then in 1997 we had Scream 2, and then Scream 3, and then Scream 4 in 2011, which was not as good, but, uh, you know, it sort of was like, sort of made for the generation of, of today, you know, because how we... Leads our lives around phones and technology. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying, Master. Oh, and uh, also, um, other slashes. Uh, there was some that are standalone films. Yeah, there is. Um, is that like, like My Bloody Valentine. Oh, uh, yeah, with the minor and everything, yeah. That was uh, quite a good standalone film. Uh, but I always think, was the remake good? Yeah, that is another thing we must discuss in this episode. Remakes and reboots. Um, what can I say? Uh, lots of horror remakes do not do as good as the original predecessor. Um, like, uh, well, I think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake was okay. Uh, the prequel, not as brilliant, uh, but uh, yeah, it obviously did good enough to get a second film, which it was a prequel. Uh, and then there was, um, there was, uh, you know, Nightmare, uh, not well, before that, it was Friday the 13th. I thought that was not a bad remake. Yeah, I like Derek Mears' Jason, it was quite good, that one. Uh, also, the remake of, yeah, I was about to say, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, that was piss. You know, no one can play Freddy Krueger apart from Robert England. He he just does not. You know, Jack Earl Harley, I liked him in Watchman, but I did not like him as Freddy Charles Krueger. You know, the role is Robert England's. Leave it alone, people. If you're listening, if you're listeners, be sure to tell people that you know, that re I'm sure our listeners are agreeing with this. Your know, remakes can be pissed at times, can't they? Well, not all the time, Master. You did enjoy Friday the 13th and like the 3D effects in My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, I guess that was okay. And also, there was the Halloween reboots from Rob Zombie. Now, the first one that Rob Zombie did was not too bad. I liked the whole backstory feel, but I feel like it took away a lot of the mystery from the character of Michael Myers. But it did have John Carpenter's blessing. Uh, but the second film was too much of a Rob Zombie original movie with characters from the Halloween films in it. I found it piss. You know, you know not the thick yellow piss, just the yellow piss. I, I just thought it, I just didn't get it with the horse. Ah, uh, you ask me, boys, that was just, uh, you know, an excuse to get his wife, Sherry Moon, zombie in it. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Um, so, uh, but, but, uh, but Halloween, there is a new one coming out this year. You, uh, yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, now, Halloween, um, you see, in 1998, uh, Halloween H2O was meant to, uh, you know, ignore the events of Halloween 4, 5, and 6. And it was meant to be, like, an alternate timeline, like a, a direct sequel to Halloween 1 and 2. 
You know, Halloween 1 and 2, I like to think of as one film, but, you know, Halloween H2O 20 years later, yeah, it is okay. It got a sequel, Halloween Resurrection. Um, and that, I thought Halloween Resurrection was a bit shizery. Well, it did have comedic elements in, and it's actually classed as a comedy slasher. And also, we, um, you know, Buster Rhymes is funny in it. He can't act. I know, boy. He really can't. He's terrible, but he was funny nonetheless. Yeah, also, what about, um, you know, uh, this one that's coming out this year? Yeah, it's entitled Halloween Returns, and we have the return of Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. And apparently, this again. It's going to be like H2O and like, no, all of the movies, you know, four, five, six, and you know, completely ignore. In fact, it probably is going to be a, like a reboot of Halloween H2O 20 years later because, um, well, it is. It's going to be a reboot. You know, they might as well call this one H4O. But still, you know, it's got John Carpenter back on board as producer, which I think is the first time in a long time. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, master. But apparently this is like co-written uh, by Danny McBride? Yeah, Danny McBride. He surprised me a lot in uh, Alien Covenant uh, because, um, well, I was not expecting to... Uh, you know, see a well good actor like him uh, star in like a film like science fiction horror. And it was quite, uh, he did quite a good job. So, you know, I also feel that maybe comedic actors uh, need to like have more involvement in horror. I mean, look at Get Out. Uh, that was written and directed by Jordan Peele, who in who I believe is a, an American comedian. And the film Get Out, we watched it, remember? It was it was surprisingly good and very enjoyable. Oh yes, master. I remember that. I love the whole twist and spin they did on it. Maybe they need to get more comedic writers in that in the horror genre writing, because if they can make good horror, you know, because it's like originality in that. I know what you're trying to say, but yeah. Uh, what they should do is, um, you know, get some more originality out of uh, the out of comedy writers as such, like Jordan Peele and, and Danny McBride. If he's going to have some involvement in this as like a writer or something, I am... Um, I think he could do okay, but we will not know until October. Oh, and it's still a while yet, because we're in February. Yeah, we are, my boy. But, you know, patience is always greatly rewarded, remember, my boy? Is what I told you about? Oh, yes, master, I know that. Good, good. Okay, so, um, another slasher film. Can you think of it, me? Uh, well, we done, uh, Psy we mentioned Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the remakes, and Halloween. Uh, what about that one with the hook man? Candyman? Well, yeah, Candyman. I was thinking more about that one where it's like the summertime. Oh, I know what you did last summer. Yeah, uh, well, uh, as we are now, like, on that subject of Candyman, I just want to say something about that okay well apparently if you say his name uh, five times in the break comes and gets you uh, but the book and the film are very different did you say it was based on a short story by Clive Barker yeah Clive Barker he is such a great master of horror you know one of Britain's finest I might say uh, but the book is different. You see, the book does not take place in Chicago. It takes place in Liverpool, England. And also, the, um, you know, the Candyman is not black. He is white. 
with blonde frizzy hair and wears a plaided patterned up coat. Uh, basically, picture the sixth doctor who call him Baker. Um, with, you know, like a, a horrifying version of him but with a hook hand. Oh, it's that little bit that remains from the book, the hook hand. Yeah, I, I would say so, yeah. They did do sequels, but I think after the second film, once they like direct to D video, yeah, direct to video, you showed me one of those videos, VHSs once. I was amazed by it because it was like a tape, but it was not like the DVD or Blu-ray you show. Yeah, I know. You'll see all technology. Some people still like to use it. Um, but yeah, the other one, I know what you did last summer. Uh, that was a good one too, is The Fisherman with the Hook. And then, of course, they did a sequel to it. I still know what you did last summer. Oh yeah, I don't think I've seen that one yet. Yeah, well, let me tell you, the sequel, it is, uh, let's say, uh, I think the first film is good. Uh, and okay when they like uh, I'm sure I'm not spoiling anything for our listeners if they have seen uh, slasher movies and horror uh, but the film oh, that was they ran over the guy and he got revenge on them a year later oh, that had that guy Leonard from the Big Bang Theory in it master <laughs> that's a funny film master yeah, yeah, Johnny Galecki, his name is, who has appeared in The Ring, too. The Ring 2? No, 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 he was in the third film, Rings. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, and also, they did um, a made-for-DVD or video, uh, third installment of that series, I oh, I'll always know what you did last summer. Uh, which I have not seen, to your surprise, if you're listening. I've been told it's not as good. But, um, yeah, th that's why I never really got around to watching it. Maybe we could watch it together, Master. Yeah, maybe, maybe sometime at some point. Um, also, uh, you know, a lot of slasher movies have inspired a lot of parody films, as such as Scary Movie. Oh yeah, when they were taking the biscuit out of Scream and had elements in there from like, I know what you did last summer and wasn't it Halloween in there? Yeah, yeah, I think there were a few references to it, but they were mainly parody young Scream and I know what you did last summer. You know, it's very, it's so complicated, the plot twist in the movie, Gary movie, but... They're basically getting every single slushy film they can think of and stuff, even The Matrix, and cram it all into one movie and just completely piss all over it. Yeah, wasn't the second one taking the biscuit out of the haunting and poltergeist and all that? Yeah, yeah, they were. And the third one was mainly focusing on science, but yeah, it's, it's all crazy, the films. Uh, okay, so, what more, what else can we discuss on the slasher films? Um, I think there's others, like Hidden Gems, like Mad Man, uh, uh, Slumber Party Massacre. Oh yeah, Hidden Gems, and also Chopping Mall. Uh, those movies are so cheesy though, but... Cheesy yet the good. Uh, other franchises in slashes are like Sleepaway Camp. Oh yeah, when that girl at the end of the film got to Willy. She didn't get it. She had it all along. She was a boy forced to live as a girl. Oh right. The second ones aren't as serious. No, they were like made for video uh, comedy slashes. Ripping off and referencing many other slasher films. There's a funny scene in, in one of the films, I think it's the second one, where a girl gets flushed into the toilet with shies all down her. 
Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was quite funny. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sleep away, come. Yeah, uh, that has some creative kills in it, too. You see, some slashy films, they might not use a s sharp bladed object. Like in Slumber Party Massacre, the killer's got like a, a drill guitar. And and a lot of the time in like, uh, in like, um, in like the Hatchet films, you know, Kane Hodder, he did say that he does love like the hands-on kills. Yeah, he like rips a person apart with the bare hands. Of course, you know, throughout the, uh, you know, right up until the 90s, it's like slasher films were getting a bit stale. It's the cliches like the jock boy, the slut girl, the black guy, the um, you know the final girl that is usually the virgin that survives. You know, those are typical cliches of the uh, of slasher films and uh, scream. Well, scream so for they will have a bit of fun with these. Um, with these slasher references and quotes, which I thought was very funny. And I mean, that is why I scream, I don't take too seriously, because it is funny. You know, like scream, one, two, or three, the trilogy, and then scream four. They made that into a television series on Netflix in Europe. Yeah, I know. Uh, the series, I, I, it was a bit hard at first to, for me to get one over by that, but I, I, I guess I tolerated it, and season two I thought also was good. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, season two, I, 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 are they doing a third season of that? I don't know, Master, I haven't looked. Oh, well, I, I don't know. It, it is okay, I guess, to Watch if there's nothing else on, but yeah, uh, Scream's TV show. Uh, but the only involvement it has with the films is the title. It's not even set in woods, bro. No, it's set in like Lake Berry or something. Yeah, and the ghost face killer. The, the, the mask does not look anything like what we see in, you know, the films. I uh, know, it looks odd and weird. Okay, so, uh, what others do you want to talk about? Oh, well, there's that new one that's come out, Victor Crowley, but we haven't seen it yet. No, my boy, no, we haven't. But we have seen the first three Hatchet films. Oh, yes, Hatchet 1, 2 and 3. You know, I like, I watch those films once in one day because, well, they're just one big film, really taking off from one another. Yeah, it is. Uh, and also, again, this one has, uh, you know, the men of many uh, slasher killers or whatever. Ken Hodder. Ken Hodder plays, you know, always plays like the masked monster villain, you know, the huge built brick shizer house. You know, just like Doing all the hands-on kills. Yeah, actually it does have funny kills like the ripping jaws, uh, the head uh, decapitation whilst anal sexing, and also we get just, it's just one big blood splatter fun gore fest. Definitely like one to watch when having beer and pizza. In fact, I saw you once eating beer and drinking pizza. Wait, I'm getting my words mixed up now. No, you was drinking beer and eating pizza whilst watching one of them films. Yeah, because uh, it was like director's night on the horror channel and the guy who was doing it, I can't remember his name now, he said that we should get a beer and some pizza and that's what I did. Okay, so uh, what else have you watched when I've been asleep? But once when you took one of your afternoon naps, I watched the film American Mary with Catherine Isabel. You know, that shows that a woman can be a psycho killer in a slasher film. 
I, I would have put that more at the torture porn, but yeah, I get what you mean when you say it's a slasher. It was written and directed by the Soska sisters. That's another thing as well. I think women have come a long way in horror, you know, from acting to writing and directing. Yeah, it has come a long way, and I, I, can, I completely support that. Um, so, um, yeah, that, uh, of course, I guess you could put the hostel films as slasher, but they're more like torture porn. You see, that is what, you know, towards the end of the 90s and, and like the early 2000s kind of, you know, focused on. They went from psychological slashing to medieval, like, horrifying torture, like, um, you know, Hostel, and the Saw films. Now, I like to think of the Saw franchise as both slasher and uh, torture porn. Oh yeah, I think Jigsaw has a creative way of killing people. Not only that, but like they say in the first one, how he gets them to kill themselves and stuff. I also like the film Jigsaw. They made like seven Saw films, and then in... 2016 and eighth film came out Jigsaw, but I like that how how Tobin Bell returned. You know, acting as if he popped his coat off for like I don't know two minutes or something. Yeah, yeah, I I enjoyed that too. I also enjoyed the twist that they unfolded in that film because I did not see any of that coming. No, no, neither did I, master. That was quite a good twist they did on Jigsaw. Uh, but yeah, do you think the Saw franchise is done yet? No, 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 no. As, as long as they keep making money, they will keep making films. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I thought Saw's final chapter was going to be the, the last one, but clearly it wasn't. Um... So, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? We haven't got long left now. We, we do have a couple of minutes before we wrap this podcast up and stuff. And it should be on the Random Horror YouTube channel on the Friday. Um, you know, for people to, uh, you know, if they don't do listen to podcasts or whatever, they can listen to it on Random Horror, you know. You see, when we're not doing Halloween in January, we're kept busy by still talking about horror films, but through podcasting. Yeah, podcasting. Uh, hmm, let me see. Uh, like hidden gem slashes that we just discussed. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Um, why don't we talk about also, uh, you know, the cliches in horror. Oh yes, of course, we need to talk about that right away. Um, yes, the cliches. So, what are they going to tell my boy? Uh, okay, so there's like, um, there's like the whole, if you have sex, you're dead. Oh yeah, because you have your guard down. Uh, if you get drunk or you... You take drugs like smoke weed, you're dead, yeah, because you're off your heads and you're getting your guard is down. Uh, also, um, if you're not a virgin, you could still get killed, even though you might survive. Yeah, yeah, you, but again, again, you could always get killed in the sequel. Yes, master, I know. And basically, don't be an asshole, And you pretty much survive as a final survivor. Yeah, that is correct, my boy. Well done. Well, um, we just have time for a little bit more of uh, conversation. Is there anything you want to say to our listeners out there, Franklin? Yeah, thanks for listening to our show. We really love doing this podcast, chatting and talking away. Yeah, we do. Um, so yeah, slashes and um, kills. And stuff. Um, is there anything more we need to talk about on slasher films? I, I don't think so, Master. Well, uh, I guess we we go to the next part of the show. Uh, 
That is where we read, um, you know, some uh, fan mail. Uh, we have fan mail? Yeah, we have, my boy. Um, let's see here. This one is from a young boy named Dead. He says, Dr. Fripp, you do black market surgery on people. I want to know how much do you charge for uh, a bully to pay the ultimate price. All I want to do is for you to cut off his arms and legs and sew his mouth shut. And you, Okay, I'm not going to do that if you're listening out there, Dave. Okay? If you have bully, then you need to stand up for yourself and kick the guy in the balls. Uh, here's one for you, Franklin. I can't read it, Master. Okay, I'll read it for you. Franklin, what's it like having two hearts? And uh, does it feel like you're a Time Lord from Doctor Who? Uh, that was a question from a young woman named uh, Yolanda. Um, I don't know. I can't feel my hearts. I know that they beat. One beats and then the other beats after because that's why I have two hearts. But the other one's like blessed by a demon. Trickster demon. Yeah, Dr. Phileas Fricker, who helped assisted me in, in making you. Uh, let's see. We have time for a few more. Ah, here's another letter. It says, uh... The Dr. Fripp, my husband uh, beats me. Could you punish him by making him a woman and let me beat him? Because I want him to know exactly what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, if, if you can find me, I'm sure we could come to some arrangement. Uh, this woman hasn't put an... Oh, here's a name. Uh, Liza. Listen, Liza, you... If you... Have the money, I can punish your husband for you and do what you've asked. Uh, okay, we have time for one more, and this is uh, for you, Franklin. Oh, what does it say? Well, it says, um, Frank N. Stein, what is with your hand? You have a glove on, and when you do not, it is like showing skeleton bone. Well, do you want me to answer that one, or you? Uh... You must, because every time I get a new hand, the flesh falls off it. Yeah, it does. It is because, uh, for some unknown reason, every time I get Franken a fresh hand, it's like his body rejects the flesh and it just rots off. So, I don't know why, but it just does. But the muscle and the skeleton structure in the hand can still move and that, and he doesn't seem to bother you, does it, boy? No, no, it doesn't, Master. And he just puts a glove on because sometimes I think it is wise for him to cover it up because, you know, you don't want to be seen on the streets with a skeleton hand, do you? Yes, I do go out a lot and do a lot of errands for you. Yes, you do. And also, you keep your face down and your hood up so people don't question you because, you know, we don't want people to be scared of you, do we? Well, no, I don't think they are scared of me. But yeah, I get what you mean. Stitches and that all round my face and my body and my legs and everywhere else on my body. Yeah. Well, I think that is pretty much it for this month's episode of the Frip and Franken Show. Um, I have been your host, Dr. Weiser Fripp, and with me has been your co-host. Do you want to say it, bud? Oh, yes. Co-host. Frank and Stein. And that has been this month's Frank Flip and Frank Ed show and the topic on slashers. The, sl the slasher genre. Well, that is pretty much it for this month's show. Do join us next month uh, where we will be podcasting another subject in horror. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening to the Flip and Frank and show. Uh, sponsored by Random Horror, or at least in association with Random Horror. Okay, well, until next time, I'd like to bid you all a whole feed of say goodbye. Yeah, bye! Okay, let's, uh, let's go and, uh, have some supper. Oh, boy! <laughs>